All right. Okay. So welcome everybody. So, I'm so thankful for you all to be sharing this time uh, about the holidays, about um, how what we celebrate, how we have developed in our own traditions from childhood to our present time as soul workers. And I want to introduce you to first Kim Carey. Uh, I know you guys all know Kim, but just in case you don't know her, uh, she is a she was a school teacher, now turned te uh, metaphysical teacher, medium, intuitive, political reader. Um, sometimes you use tarot. You have a lot of gifts. You're a channeler. So, um, and also you bring so many people to the community. I mean, actually, all three of you guys do this. All three <laughs> of you guys do so many collaborations. All four of us do this. All four of okay. us do. Well, yeah. thank you. Okay. <laughs> so thank you. So I'm so... So Kim is at Intuitive View, and I will put descriptions down below. And then Debbie, uh, Freebird Spirit. Yeah. I believe you're a counselor, right? Is that your background? Um, yeah, I, I worked in the field of psychology for over th about 38 years or so, um, all over the place in that field. But um, Wow. Mm -hmm. And now metaphys uh, teacher, oh, no. metaphysical teacher, medium, psychic, tarot reader, pol pol political reader. Um, wow. Yeah. So, I mean, again, lots of fun, lots of fun things. <laughs> yeah. So you don't even look 38 years old. So I don't know how you can Thank do that. It's, it's the filter. Okay. <laughs> Focus. Ring lines, filter. <laughs> the filter. Thank you. Freebird spirit. Okay. And Danny Shea, bathrobe tarot. So Danny, uh, what's very secret in his background, but as far as I can tell, he's been a businessman turned tarot reader, shaman, uh, teacher, um, and uh, developing medium. So uh, I'm very honored uh, to share with you this space. And uh, you and I have taught classes together and yeah. we'll, can, we'll do it again. So, all right, thank you. So thank you. So um, I do have a few questions I'd like to ask you about the holidays. <laughs> and I have, oh, there goes my dog. Can you hear the dog? Oh. No. It's a Christmas dog. Oh, there we go. Okay. Uh-oh. <laughs> so I did, and I had a friend from um, Kelly Scarborough. She's a friend who helped me come up with some of these questions. She also has a brand new channel to the Mystic Next Door. So I'm just going to say hi to Kelly because I know she'll be watching. <laughs> hi, Kelly. Hi, Kelly. Yeah. Okay. So... I guess I'd like to know really, um, I know we have, of course, our parents taught us certain things about the holidays. And I'm going to start with you, Danny. How did you spend, now, first of all, Christmas, right? Because I know you're Catholic. Was. Okay. Okay. Sorry. That's right. I, I was raised. Yes. So how did you spend the holidays when you, as a child? Um, we would make, so one of the, the memories that I have of that is, so I grew up in St. Louis, so it would be, we would have like feet of snow wow. when, when I grew up. I remember um, <clears throat> doing, you know, toboggan rides and sleigh rides down our street, which, you know, because of global warming, we don't get that anymore, or they don't, but I remember my dad would make popcorn in the fireplace on one of those um, grills where you put the kernels and you just shake it inside the fire pit and we would have popcorn. So that was one of the things that we used to do all the time. And, you know, they would do the, the Christmas stockings in the, on the fireplace and the Christmas tree. And Yeah. And did you open presents uh, eat Christmas Eve? Or Christmas morning and morning. Okay. And so um unless I was bad and then I did it the night before. <laughs> to make sure. Okay. <laughs> oh, so they were already well, under the tree. Under, the, yeah, they were under the tree, and I would go sneak in there and open a couple of presents. I see. What about Santa though? Did Santa come? Santa knew that I did that, and um consequently I didn't get all the good presents I wanted because I was bad. <laughs> mm. uh, I know. Okay. Right? That's awesome. Okay. 
I just thought I was inquisitive, but obviously not. Well, I Santa think sounds be. very judgmental, Danny. He was. He was a very judgmental Santa. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> okay. So, Kim, how about you? What did, what did you do in Christmas when you were young? Gert. Well, yeah, I grew up in San Jose, so no snow in San Jose, California. Um, my my dad loved Christmas. Ironically, he was uh, an agnostic, an a maybe an atheist agnostic, really didn't talk about what happens to you when, you die, when you're dead, you're dead, that kind of person. Uh -huh. <laughs> Kept it real. Uh, but he loved Christmas, absolutely loved Christmas. My mom, not so much. I think it stressed her out. <laughs> so yeah. she went along and she, you know, but she was the one who had to do the shop. Very uh, traditional 50s uh, dynamic with my parents, you know. She stayed home. My mom, my dad went to work. So, of course, she had to buy all the presents and she had to do things. But, but um, so I think it stressed her out a little bit. I love her. her I loved her popcorn balls. She always made popcorn balls every Christmas. Um, we had a lot of, I mean, I was very involved in the church. I grew up in the Mormon church. And so we had a lot of church activities and stuff that I found really fun as a kid. Um, we did a lot of charity things. We'd leave things on people's doorsteps and, you know, that kind of stuff, um, wow. which I really, that's what I like and what I, what I miss. If I miss anything about the church, that is what it is, that kind of community and, and helping one another. Mm -hmm. um, but so that's a lot of it was, and I was always hook, line, and sinker about Santa, for sure. All of it, I loved all of that stuff. Um, I would look out the window on Christmas Eve and try to see his sleigh, and I would, you know, leave cookies and milk for him, and um, went to the department store, probably like a lot of 70s kids and 80s kids did, um, you know, going to the department store to see Santa and get a picture. Um, very, very uh, I, idyllic, I think in a lot of ways, but very traditional Christmas stuff. Mm -hmm. Opened them Christmas morning, one present on Christmas Eve. I don't know if other people did that, but one, pre one present Christmas Eve. Um, I would always, I mean, I spent my life trying to be good. I still do that. I try to just be good, just be good. So I, you know, was sure I'd always haul in the presents on Christmas because well, I, I was all about being good. They're trying to be good. So um <laughs> very, very I have a lot of really good memories. And I have four sisters. So you know it was kind of chaotic, but it was it was fun. It was fun. No brothers, just four sisters. Four sisters, yeah. They're all uh, seven years older and then older. I was the way tail end baby. I was the I was the last you know shot for a boy, I think. Um <laughs> No such luck. <laughs> it was me. <laughs> Amazing. So yeah. Wow. I've only known one other family like that with them. Five girls. Yeah. <laughs> huh. Five girls. <laughs> okay. So Debbie, oh. what did you do? Uh, well, so um it, very similar to, to Kim's. Um, I I grew up in San Diego, so no snow. Um but, um, and, you know, sometimes you were wearing shorts even on <laughs> Christmas because you'd have those mm -hmm. 80. I don't know why it always would turn 80 on Christmas morning, but anyway. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, very, uh, what you would consider idyllic, like Kim said. Um, we, I grew up, um, my parents were Lutheran, so we did the traditional uh you know uh lent so the four week four mm -hmm. i don't i don't even know what it is that's horrible isn't it four weeks leading up to christmas or something we would go every wednesday night for service and they'd light a candle each wednesday and i'd be counting down you know um, um they always had where uh, the kids the sunday school kids did a show you know a christmas program which I was always involved with in singing at the top of my lungs um, <laughs> and being a part of it. You know, I was at that point, um, I loved uh, that kind of thing, being um, in, in the plays and stuff like that. Oh, nice. Um, in the choir and, and like all that. So all of that little church, and it was a small little church. Um, so very homey and what you would think of, like that 
Um, mm -hmm. And then Christmas Eve, we would have the candlelight service where we'd hold a little candle and it would melt on our little fingers mm. <laughs> and uh, everything like that. So, um, you know, I, I just, those types of things, the community that the little church brings, I really like that as far as bringing families together for Christmas, like a holiday and feeling good in those moments because mm -hmm. life is so traumatic. And so I really, um, for me, it was just a beautiful time of magic. It was magic to me. Mm -hmm. um, so we hung stockings. We did all that. We had the Christmas tree. We had the, you know, we, we did all that and the lights outside. My, my mom was very much into decorating. Um, in fact, she still very much is. Her house pretty much is Christmas all year round now. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> so you know, because she has all the nativ nativity scenes, she has she's collected nativity scenes, and she has them in special glass cases. <laughs> so you can write. Okay. So, um, are you at your mom's house right now? I'm at my daughter's house. Okay. And so, didn't some didn't you just have a present recently? Uh, I, I do. I have a little Christmas present. <laughs> <laughs> I have a new little granddaughter. Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, so I'm not very little though. She's nine, nine nine and a half pounds. My, my poor little, my poor little daughter, who's like five foot and weighs like maybe a hundred pounds at a nine and a half pound baby. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Wow. Well, congratulations, grandma. Yeah. Thank is you. Is this your first grandchild? No, this is my, this is number. Well, it's a blended family. So she has, this is her third birth. Um, but we, so it's four grandchildren all together though. Yeah. Wow. Well, oh, nice. special. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Very special. Oh, and I love hearing too. I know I can really visualize having the candle wax burning on your hot on your fingers. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. And, um, interesting enough though, um, in this, the childhood experience here, um, I had one at my first, um, well, not my first, but one that I remember, um, I must have been around six um, out of body experiences, because oh. I know I had them, but this was when I remembered um, around Christmas, it's always kind of stuck with me, and it was on Christmas Eve, and I think I was just so excited, like him waiting for Santa to come. You know what I mean? And it was time to go to sleep, and you had to go to sleep or Santa wouldn't come. So I'm like, okay, I'll go to sleep, but I'm I'm out of my body waiting, you know. Oh my gosh. Anyways, yeah. So that was one of the first times I remember a significant experience of being out of my body. How old were you, Debbie? I was like six or seven or yeah, that's how it, yeah. So many things happen to people at the age of six, it seems yeah. like. Yeah. When you know, huh. you know, that kind of stuff is very yeah, interesting. And it, so it was just one of those ones that stuck with me. I've had other ones that have yeah. that I remember that were very significant. But that was one that was significant because um, it was the first memory of one. You know what I mean? Yeah. Do you think you were like trying to look on the rooftop for the sleigh or I mean, what were you? Do you what do you think you were doing or did you see a sleigh? <laughs> I did not see a sleigh. Um, I, I literally was like traveling through the house, though. And, you know, my parents are in here and they're kind of bickering about something. And that disturbed me. Um, and then I just went out by the tree and um, was uh, out in in the in the living room area where the tree was, and everything was as it was when I went to sleep. And um, you know, I always too would leave something for Santa. And um, uh, my mom was a home ec teacher, so we cooked and sewed and did all kinds of stuff every Christmas. So, um, but. Um, and and then kind of traveling around the house I was just like what am I doing you know how do I get back to sleep you know because then I still felt like okay well I'm out of my body but I, I, maybe I'm holding things up because I'm not asleep <laughs> and so <laughs> you know just trying to get back um get back um and so my so as soon as I figured it out because then it kind of started getting a little scary so um, I, I just my so then once I put my intention to going back, I was back in my body and just kind oh of turned. Oh it's amazing. Yeah. Oh gosh. Okay. 
Yeah. And what about you, Kim? You have to share too. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, I think, so we didn't, I didn't grow up in a religious family. Um, I mean, I was, I will say I was, went to Catholic school for a couple of years and I was baptized Catholic, but we didn't really practice. And so it was not much into, we didn't do church. So we did do the commercial type of Christmas, you know, where you have the tree and the stockings and we did all that. You know, we had a nice dinner. Um, and it, for me, I think as a kid, it was about Santa and presents. <laughs> but, you know, as I got older and when I got married, then I kind of used my husband's traditions, which were much more rich. And some of the, I mean, one of the things, and I'll just say this, uh, um, one of the things that they, well, I mean, my mother-in-law loved Christmas, you know, so uh, the food like orange ice was a tradition or cheese grits was a tradition table presents were a tradition so like these tiny little presents instead of, you know to decorate the table you know and, oh, and it could yeah. be a, you know a jar of tabasco i mean nothing big uh, but it was fun you know it just makes it and it's decorative and fun and um yeah so so i think i probably actually got more traditions from her <laughs> Um, yeah, and I still, we still, uh, we're going to do table presents this year. <laughs> Yay, I like that. So, yeah. Okay, so now let me go on. We're going to move on here. Um, <laughs> and I did write some questions down. Okay, now, what about fruitcake? Now, this is a little bit, you know, is it a yes or a no? What, okay, Danny, do you want to, I mean, do, no, no on fruitcake? <laughs> No, I, I, well, I'm not much of a, uh, well, I used to not be much of a sweet person. Um, so it, anything with sugar, I, I wouldn't like it. And if it stuck to my teeth, I really didn't like it. So um, yeah, fruit cake, cake, not a good one for me. Okay. What, or what about eggnog? Well, you know, being in Catholic, uh, being a Catholic, of course, it depends on how much brandy you put in the eggnog. Yeah, I thought it was rum. Is it brandy? Well, okay. you can do well, either rum one. You can do brandy. rum, you can do brandy, and you, you can do whiskey. Okay. So we would have one of each. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. <Aww>. yeah. <laughs> You think about, I'm kidding, yeah, though. Kim. Um, <laughs> and I love I love fruit cake. And I love fruit cake as a kid too. So I don't know. Wow, you're a fruit cake person. I'm one of the few people I know that like it. <laughs> what about you, Kim? Um, well, to be honest, <laughs> I've never tried it. <laughs> what? But I know I don't think I know I don't I don't think I like it. <laughs> but I don't I but I to be honest, I, I like fruit. I love fruit. And, and Danny, I can't even imagine my life if I didn't have sugar or candy or the, that's a, what I practically live for. Besides movie and television, that is what I live for. <laughs> so I would be out of luck. But I, so I love sweets. I love sweets. Um, I love candy canes. So that's kind of my go-to Christmas things. I like things that you crunch or chewy, whatever. Um, very, you know, sweet. I like peppermint, that kind of thing. But fruit cake, um, I've never tried. But I don't like. Oh, I was gonna say, I love fruit, but I don't like it in stuff. Like I don't like raisins and cookies, and I don't like fruit in chocolate, and I don't like fruit in. And I don't think I'd like fruit in cake. Although Great I good. do love strawberry shortcake. <laughs> hey, uh, I, I do. <laughs> have, I do have a very fresh fruit cake. It's only three or four years old, and it's just as good. <laughs> aged as fresh and um i'll send it to you <laughs> <laughs> yeah my, and she'll my send it back to you I'll next year <laughs> she'll, she'll send it back to you next year on christmas i'll, send it back. <laughs> I'll be like it's even better now danny here <laughs> we, we used to we we had a group of um people that we, we hung out with um you know as we were raising kids that that young young adult group and we would get together every christmas and do a, a gift exchange and uh, no joke i feel like this fruitcake probably came back for 10 years yeah yeah <laughs> see i would have just grabbed it i just i don't know what it is i just love it <laughs> i've never had one either oh you haven't um, eaten no, and I just can't even. I, I'm the same. Don't put any fruit in anything, and 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 don't 
ruin things with raisins and don't <laughs> all that out. Oh my yeah. goodness. And, and I, I 100% have a sweet tooth too, Kim. Uh, yeah. Wow. Uh, but yeah, That's don't so ruin, funny. don't ruin things. What, what about Christmas ham with pineapple on top of it? We didn't do that. No. Well, maybe on occasion. What maybe. on occasion? Well, maybe on occasion, but it wasn't. I don't eat ham now. I mean, oh. I like I like piggies. You know, I, <laughs> I was going to show you collect, my piggy. I think she collects pigs. <laughs> oh, well, no, I just made this. Oh, cute! But it's, you made I just that? love pigs. You made that? Uh huh. It's needle quilted. Wow. Look at oh how cute oh, that is! I made half of my decorations. Most of the decorations, well, half I made. Oh my god! That is so great. over the years. Wow! <laughs> like this little snowman I made, you know. So, uh, oh, cute. It's really easy. It's real easy. Um, you say that people say that. Oh, it's real easy. Yeah. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> I used to be addicted to this. I you, I always, you know, I have a scarf now. I used to have wool hanging around my neck because it's all made out of wool, right? So everywhere I went, I was always, I had my little needle and I would just, if, even at restaurants, I'd be taking it with me. I mean, this is when my kids were little. I don't know. I just was oh. always into making something. I love that. But um, oh, now I'm doing mediumship. <laughs> you know, it's so, I've changed. <laughs> um, so... <laughs> And so eggnog. Now I see my ex father in law used to make his own eggnog, although I never tried it. But I hear it was not too good. <laughs> the homemade kind. I just don't think I could do homemade. I just because I know what goes into it. Okay. Oh. I couldn't drink it because you know you've seen it go in and it's just like mm -mm, I can't drink eggs. The only okay. thing I know that goes in it is alcohol. I don't know what the base is at all. Eggs. Eggs. Egg. No, <laughs> right? But I, I love eggnog you, you buy in the store. Yeah, <laughs> I do too. And I've never tried it with alcohol, actually. I only oh, just have yeah. eggnog. So, nice little, <laughs> so nice I'm doing little, that this year. <laughs> nice little addition. Yeah, it goes really yeah. well with fruitcake. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> See, when wow. I have the fruitcake, I just eat the fruit. <laughs> I, I just eat the fruit and I don't eat the cake part. Oh, mm. even when I eat like with chocolate raisin cookies or whatever, I just eat the chocolate and the raisins and I don't eat the oh. cookie. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know. It's I kind don't of understand weird. that, Kim. <laughs> I, <yeah. laughs> I'm the opposite. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we can have cookie yes, together and I'll eat the cake chocolate. and I'll give you the fruit. <laughs> okay. Or I'll eat the frosting on the cake. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, frosting for sure. Give me the frosting. Sure. Okay, so I was going to ask, what is like a favorite? Now we're talking a little bit. Maybe I'm. Maybe you guys are already mentioning favorites. But was there a favorite memory or gift or even a favorite? Let me see. Oh, well, you already talked about food. But is there something that stands out as like a favorite something that happened around the holidays? I mean, I can. Do you need to think about it a minute? Okay, I'll tell you when. Well, I always go. I always go back to one Christmas that. Um, I was about five and I don't know why it was so magical, but it was. And all I wanted was, cause I love baby dolls. I always love baby dolls. And I wanted, uh, I asked for a baby buggy and a, it was just a, like the nice, it was a blue buggy and it was kind of shiny and it had little white you know, little stenciling on the sides. Oh, and no. it was, you know, had the silver thing. It looked like an adult, like baby buggy that you'd have. And um, I always remember that. I don't know what was so special about that, but I just felt like just, yeah, it was like everything. And I, you know, I wore it out. It was just, but it's, it's, what it's still kind of one of my, maybe it's the, um, the sled in, uh, in um, uh, what's the, what's the, the, uh, the movie with, um, the Grinch. Uh, no, no. <laughs> Cause they had a sled that went. Yeah. Yeah. Rosebud, the sled, maybe it's like that. It was just such a, um, uh, in Citizen Kane, you know, that, mm -hmm. that it was such a gift of love to me from my parents. They knew that 
it was something that I wanted and it was something that I wanted for such, um, in their eyes, probably at the time, such a sweet reason just to, just to carry my baby dolls around and take care of them. So I think that's why it wow. kind of, you know, stands out. Love kids. And then you ended up being a teacher for kids. <laughs> I, 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 yeah. That was so sweet. I love that. The nurturer. The yeah. <laughs> caretaker. <laughs> Yeah, that blue energy, that, that light color blue. Hmm. Yeah, Do you have one? Thing? Well, I certainly can't top that. <laughs> well, I think you can. <laughs> I think you can. Oh. No. Um, well, you know, the thing, um, I, I just remember um, the, the snow and the sledding and mm. the, during that time. Um, and just, you know, it, I mean, it, it was the 50s idea of, of the holiday. And so that's kind of what I remember, just a, a fire making popcorn on the fire, sledding, mm -hmm. being icy cold, being a brat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you were not, Danny. Mm. Oh. No. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> but are you as it, be, as it should be Dan yes um, as it should be. <laughs> uh, so the first thing that always that comes to my mind and it kind of I guess whenever I think back on you know this question because I've been when people say what was your favorite you know gift that you ever got you know this one always comes in and I must have been yeah about seven uh again the magical time of Christmas when you're that age. Um, and a, an aunt came to visit. Um, and so I had lots and lots of aunts, um, a great aunts. My, my, um, my dad's mom had many, many sisters. So I had lots of aunts and one just came to visit that one Christmas. Like I never even met, well, I mean, obviously I had met her, but you don't remember at seven and um and she brought me this gift and you know i had already opened all the other gifts of the morning and santa and all that and um she came later that afternoon and brought this gift and i opened it and it was a, a doll but it wasn't just the doll and it was just like this box and the doll had a spot and all the little clothes like it came with a bunch of little clothes and they were all in their little spots and it was all just ordered and so cute. And I could take the doll and dress the doll in all these different <laughs> clothes and put the clothes right back in their little slots. That has um, always, and I just was so moved. I, I, even at seven, that this, this aunt that I, that she got this beautiful, amazing gift for me. And there's lots of kids. It wasn't like I was the only a kid. There was like, you know, eight of us or whatever. So it's like, and she got, uh, I was just very, it was a, it, it was meaningful because it was exactly what I would love. I say she knew what you loved and she yeah. knew what you'd love. And yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. yeah. Beautiful. Well, I'll tell you something that happened. It wasn't really happened to me, but it happened to my sister. I mean, well, I guess one of my favorite things that I remember was the easy bake oven, you know, oh, yes. and I wore mm -hmm. that out. I mean, I was cooking brownies or whatever, right? But <laughs> one year, but my sister who loved Jim West, you know, the wild, wild West way back then, maybe you guys might be too young to know that show. But anyway, Jim West and my my sister, who's a year and a half younger than me, just loved, loved him. So my dad bought my sister a wedding dress. And she, I mean, I'm thinking she was about seven. And so... Uh, he then, so he bought her a wedding dress and he wrote her a note, will you marry me? Okay, oh, uh, Jim West, okay. So then he <laughs> went and he put on a suit and he went and knocked on the door. That reminds me, my dad also dressed as Santa one year. We came home and there was Santa, you know, I mean, he's like there and we sat on his lap. We didn't even know it was him. Yeah, but anyway, so he, so, <laughs> so then but my dad so knocked on the door and he said, Jim West is here. And so, um, but he had a bucket over his head. <laughs> like, like she's not going to recognize him. <laughs> Jim Most is here. 
And so she was so excited. She put on her wedding dress and everything and answered the door. And, and, he, and he said, will you marry me? I mean, I think he changed his voice, right? Will you marry me? And um, and she said, well, why do you have a bucket on your head? I said, so the neighbors won't recognize me. I, mean, I don't know. It was just, it was, it was fun. That is the cutest thing I've ever heard. How sweet that is nice. that of your dad to do that? I uh, yeah right right. Another, I'll just say one more thing that is a memory that stands out. And I was a teenager then, or probably around seventeen. Um, and my grandparents were coming. His parents were coming to visit. We were living in Houston, Texas at the time, and my dad worked was in the car business, and so he bought a car for my grand his dad for Christmas, and he put a big bow. I mean you know, huge bow. You wrap the car all around and put this big bow. And then my grandfather, you know, was so happy to get it. I think it was a Thunderbird, um, but he drove it, you know, to the end. He, now, whenever he comes in, and is a, you know, he's one of my um, people yeah, a lot. He comes in a lot. And he always talks about that car. Wow. It's a, it's a memory, you know, and it, so I know when it, he's talking about that car, then I know it, who it is. <laughs> That is so and you know cool. that's, a, that's a great thing too, Kim, because I think a lot of people don't realize um, if they, uh, well, I mean, most people don't do mediumship, but if they don't do mediumship, they they don't realize that a lot of times when memories like that just pop into your mind out of nowhere, that's the person reminiscing yeah. with you, right? Mm -hmm. They're bringing it in. So maybe over the holidays, as people memories come back and things those people that aren't there that share those memories with you that's how that's how they do it that's exactly and like you said he keeps he comes in and talks about the car and that's what something that you shared so yeah yeah very special it was you know he just he was so grateful you know um and yeah and this is a time too where the spirit people are closer right because we yeah. tend to remember them as we're doing the holidays or especially if they just passed mm -hmm. over the last year mm -hmm. uh, and you know and we often think about these things that we did with our family and this does bring them closer and i'm sure all of our family that's in spirit is listening now to our talking about the memories mm -hmm. yeah yeah absolutely Yes. Okay. So now in the present day, you guys, and I know we want to, I don't want to go over an hour. So I just want to, um, you know, just being cognizant of our time here. Um, the present day, you know, we have developed as uh, obviously we're adults. <laughs> obviously we are spiritually awakened and we might look at the holidays different now. And I'm just wondering what might bring, what do you do, Danny, and what brings you joy now? I mean, how would you, what, do you, I mean, as a shaman, tarot reader, how do you bring in that sacredness now? Um, I, I, I personally don't like do much different because um, I, 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 I think every day is really precious and mm -hmm. that we need to, um, treat every day as, as something special. My wife doesn't agree with me. So this is huge for her. These holidays are really, really big. So whatever, um, you know, she has the whole house decorated. I have five electric lights that I put outside. It's the most <laughs> pathetic thing in the neighborhood because they're just five <laughs> snowflakes hanging in front of my garage, but um, to, I don't know, I, I, I can't get into the decoration, although I do because of, of my wife, but um, it does, I, for me, it does, um, I, it, it is a, a sacred time though, and it's, it feels like it is a special time, and so I just acknowledge that it's it just feels like a special time, although any day can feel like that if we put that much energy into it. Mm -hmm. So when you go out and do your morning ritual, do you do it different during this time of year? Because is this is the you know the most within time? Do you I, I I not that I know of. 
Um, Cause every day is a little different with my morning ritual. So um, it, some days it's like, man, am I not connecting in other days? It's like, wow, super connected. So um, I just never really paid attention to see if, if it was different during this time or, or another time. So. Mm -hmm. Awesome. I would imagine that you, don't you have Christmas trees in your yard? I say Christmas trees, evergreens. No, we have, uh, we have oak trees. Oh, okay. No, yeah, so there's, we, no, no, but it feels like Christmas every day. <laughs> Good. Good. <laughs> All right, Kim, what about you? Um, you know, in 2000, oh, what was it, 2014 or 15, when I read A New Earth, Eckhart Tolle, my life changed and it really did change. And as, and so, and I, I'm with Danny, kind of every day, I really try to be present and cognizant and aware. And I think during the holidays, I think I am, uh, I try to be extra, extra grateful. Mm -hmm. And I think that, um, well, an, an example, right? One, one, one reason is because I think back on like a Christmas, like when I was about 16, my family decided, to, we always were in, in a California, we decided to go to Utah to visit my sister because all our kids were little. It was hard for her to come to us. So we went to her that year. And I was, like I said, I was 16. So I had my friends and I had a boyfriend and I didn't want to leave. And it was stupid there. And I didn't want to go there. It was too cold and blah, blah, blah. I was, you know, just, I was 16. So, um, but now, and, and I was a jerk the whole Christmas and I was kind of pouty and kind of, and I was, you know, trying to escape to call my friends. And so it's just stupid stuff. But now, right. I think back on that Christmas and I think, my parents were alive. <laughs> the kids mm. were little. You know, my nieces and nephews were tiny. Mm. Um, I was young. <laughs> you know, I was only sixteen. <laughs> um, it was the we. It was a snowy Christmas. We were around snow. All of my relatives were still around. They were still alive. My grandma was still here. Her yeah. sister was still here. I and so I, I've got chills right now. I think my my family is like it's okay. But yeah, I girl. but but I feel like. I, but I, but I use that as just an example of in any, any Christmas, what, even if you're by yourself, or even if you, you, we lost our mom this year. So even if you lost someone, if, there's always, always stuff to be thankful for. And so I try mm -hmm. every year to really just look for the stuff I'm thankful. I'm thankful for everybody who's still here this Christmas. I'm thankful for the time I had with my mom. I'm think, you know, I'm, I just go through, you know, Cassie's coming home this Christmas with her new husband. So we're going to all spend it together. But I think, you know, even if you, you are by yourself, you know, put on your favorite Christmas movies and listen to your favorite Christmas music and, and, and make stuff, you know, to be thankful for, because I, I think um, when you do that and you are completely present and cognizant, you don't have to look back and be like, why was I a jerk when I was 16? <laughs> why was, you know, you can, you know, that I, I did the best I could and I enjoyed every minute. I was fully present and I really appreciated it at the time. Um, it's the best gift you can give yourself, I think, to be present, right? To be present. I love that. Mm. Just to be All present. Right. Just, to, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Like I'm, I'm present with you guys right now, right? I, I, I love it. I love hanging out with you guys right now. Aww. Yeah. Too bad we don't have our eggnog with our brandy. All <laughs> <laughs> <know>, right. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Aww. Yeah, Debbie. Um, no, no, I was just showing you my eggnog oh, with. He was going to hand it to us, but, but I don't. <laughs> Here. Delicious. <laughs> um, so I feel. Um, you know, the Christmases over time have, have morphed, you know, um, and when I had my, when I began to have my own family and my own system, it, it, it changed into, um, I, I really wanted my family to be aware of um, that we, you know, we were 
privileged to have a tree and and presents and you know and we had food and like all that I, yeah I, I wanted them to be globally aware and so you know good or bad I just that's um and so you know on our tree we would put um um prayers uh, for and I'd have them even very small you know who do you however it was it didn't matter their little prayers um and so over the years we would we would put prayer uh, like and they would be the ornaments on the tree right oh, so their name, <laughs> name wow. yeah like the name and um it, we'd have decorations too but um these prayers would go on and so leading up to Christmas, we would take down uh, a prayer and um, cool. intentionally pray for whatever was on that little prayer card. And so um, we did that for a while. And then, it, you know, as they got into teenagers, of course, that, you know, kind of faded. <laughs> and, um, you know, it was basically uh, my son and I, uh, we were we were the only two in the house that were totally into uh, decorating and Christmas and stuff like that. And so we would do all the decorating and doing that kind of thing. And we, you know, created our own little traditions, you know, as far as, um, you know, breakfast and like that, uh, like the night before, you know, we would, we would do all these things um, to make these traditions. My son was very much into he loved traditions. He loved that whole family thing. Anything to do with family and and together, he wanted he was wanted to enforce. And so we always did that. Uh, and then it um, you know morphed into you know having some Christmases kind of on my own, and you know uh, being uh, you know single, and you know my daughter over here, and you know everybody, you know. So, uh, and creating my own system then, and, you know, putting up the tree and like uh, Danny and Kim were saying, as far as being present and finding joy just in, in these old decorations that I'm putting up and every decoration had mem has a memory to it and, and just stepping into that memory. And yes, yeah, some of them bring grief, but that's okay because that's so beautiful that we had those moments and, um, and, and embrace that grief as a gift because how beautiful is it that we loved so big and mm -hmm. so and that we mm -hmm. got to love so big and so it, it, it then it kind of interchanges with just joy because of this this time that we are offered during the holiday season um to have this have these step into these memories step into this feeling I think it's a gift. Um, I know some people run from it and that's okay too. Um, but for me, it's a gift. And um, uh, another thing that we used to, I forgot to add this when the kids were younger um, that I would do the, the Jewish uh, traditions as well. So all those, all the, the meals and, 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 and rip, um, the menorah and all that too. Cause I, I, I wanted them to also understand that there's more to, uh, you know, uh, the, the spiritual sense, to, you know what I mean? There's a lot out there. So I wanted everybody, I wanted them to understand and uh, experience those things too. So I tried my best. It was a total white girl thing, you know, to, you know <laughs> it's like, I'm sure if, you know, here's the Kwanzaa, here's this, here's that. I'm sure they would all come to my house and go, what are you doing? <laughs> but I'm just trying to bring awareness, you know. Um, so I forgot about that part. Um, but um, yeah, and uh, it, now it's more of a, a, a practice of, um, yeah, uh, just um, understanding that, um, gosh, this life, it, it, it is really hard and we chose to come here and it, it is just uh, this school is hard and um but this time we get to have this little bit of a, a moment where we can um find find this peace and love and people are putting that intention peace and love and and all the songs and everything that we hear during this season to try to 
to bring in some of that peace and love during this time. Um, I mean, wars even stopped, you know, back on the right civil war. Didn't they just stop at Christmas and hug each other and drink together? And then they, you know what I mean? Like, it, it's just a thing. And I feel like it's a gift from the universe <laughs> that we can all just kind of pause whatever our traditions are, just pause at this time and just relax for a moment. And, you know what I mean? And just feel that love and peace. So that's kind of where I'm at with it. But I think that's um, such a good point, Debbie, because I think that is that this this time of year, it does give us moments where we are our best selves, right? It it shows yeah. that that's the hope, right? That that's what the hope is, right? Because we see glimpses of that. Um, all, everybody does, you know, uh, this this time of year, around this time of year, that you just see those moments, glimpses of your best self, and know what and things could be does, though, where you're finding people are exactly it. exactly yeah. exactly and it's just not in the in the um christmas traditions too because debbie is what That's you right. said being the total white girl bringing in another but you know it's still you still were bringing something in that wasn't the christmas it was a jewish tradition even though it may not have been exactly right whatever that means Here it wasn't <laughs> yeah but still it's the idea that there is so many other beliefs out there but they're still wrapped up in this time frame mm -hmm. that um we, we do get to pause we do get to celebrate we do get to look at what went past without an attachment and then get to start planning for the future. So it's a really exciting time, but it is a time of, of pause. And, and I think that the veil is, is a lot thinner at this time so that we can all experience a, a little bit more of the harmony between everybody um, with all our warts and disagreements. Yeah. They just kind of all fade away. Nice. Yeah, I think society now that they expect that this December, right, is a time of holidays. So that allows people to, to do that. You know, I mean, even no matter what your belief system, whether you're atheist or not, but it's, uh, I think, coming from the light of the heart. And I love Debbie, I love what you shared. You're so inspirational. I want to, I'm going to do that this year. I'm going to put, I used to do that on Easter, an Easter tree, put the little prayers up, but I'm going to do it for Christmas. So that's it. Yeah, it's such a good idea. Yeah, I'm stealing that too. Yeah, for all to steal that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, lots of prayers. Yay. <laughs> oh, wow. And I love that your, your intention for having your children be more aware of different cultures and society. Mm -hmm. How beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Ahead of your time, girl. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. Um, is there anything else you want to share? I, I, see. I, feel yeah, like I, 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 I have questions. Okay. Ooh. Okay. okay. Meaning of life is, <laughs> okay, no. <laughs> so here, here's my question. If you had to pick, pick one, one Christmas song, or one movie and or one movie, what would it be? Put you on the spot. Well, my, I already know mine. <laughs> but my favorite Christmas movie is It's a Wonderful Life, which we're going to do on our, I have a, I have a, a club and we're going to do that as for our movie club. We're doing yeah. It's a Wonderful Life next month. And then, um, and with the elf a close second, I have to say for modern day, elf is a close second. And then the, <laughs> the song, I would probably say, um, I love, I love white Christmas and I love have yourself a merry little Christmas. Those two are probably, they're both very sad, <laughs> but I like those two. <laughs> those are probably my two favorite songs too. Mm -hmm. Although the Beach Boys Christmas album. Always favorite <laughs> of that too. So okay. you California girls. I know. <laughs> Debbie, what do you got? Um, I, I, I have to look up the because right when you said that, uh, my mind went blank. You know how my mind does that. Okay. I, I'm gonna throw some out while you're looking because because I, I did have a I because I thought of it, so I did look it up and I knew I knew what the song was. Being being um raised in a 
Irish Catholic Christmas thing, everybody was drinking. Everybody got wasted. Um, and so Jethro Tull's Christmas song, when that came out, he has a line in there that says the Christmas spirit. I thought it said the Christmas spirit is not what you think, which I agree today, but it's the Christmas spirit is not what you drink. Oh, <laughs> and I went, wow. Okay. So that was big. <laughs> and then the other one that, um, you know, if I'm in a car, it's just, I'm not getting out of the car till the song's over is John Lennon's happy Christmas. Mm -hmm. happy oh, christmas yeah. it's merry christmas but he called it happy christmas happy christmas, so, yeah. happy christmas. Mm -hmm. and the war is over if that's you a want great to. one yeah okay one of the downfalls of being here is the my service is really bad so <laughs> it's still loading but um um the song is um have yourself a very Merry Christmas. Uh, Merry that Christmas. one, though. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I love that one. Top, top song. And the movie, um, and so maybe you guys can help me out. We'll do a little charades here because literally. Sounds like, like two words. My mind just went blank. And, and so it's about a family and, um, and they, uh, everybody's like okay that could is be it bad santa no. is it an old movie um no Debbie? it's a new, well it's it's, it's a, probably i would say at 10 or 11 years old and um maybe 12 years uh and um with the little kid in the glasses so they're they're all adult children and they're all coming home and um, the the man that plays in it is he played on Coach, mm -hmm. and the uh -huh. woman, the mom in it, she happens to have breast cancer. Mm -hmm. Not ringing any bells. You guys don't know. Um, was Holly Hunter in it? Which one is uh, anyway. that? That could be true. Um, starting. Um, I can't believe it doesn't. Oh, it's called The Family Stone. The Family oh. Stone. Oh, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. My number one um, uh, Christmas movie, The Family Stone. Mm -hmm. Wow. I remember that. Yeah. Good one. And, um, but I love all, you know, I, it, my partner uh, is on a cruise right now with her mom and sister. And, <laughs> And she's like, okay, get all your, you know, movies out of the way, <laughs> you know, because I, <laughs> I, I will power watch through all the Christmas movies. I just love oh. getting on the um, Hallmark channel and watch all the stupid, I just love all that. I do too. I do too, Debbie. <laughs> I just like looking at the decorations in the background. Yeah, it's a like <laughs> how the houses are decorated. <laughs> yeah, yep. Yeah. Oh. And Kim, what about you? But no, I like to, I mean, actually, I love a lot of the Christmas songs. I like Away in a Manger. I like You Have Yourself a Little Merry Christmas. I like um, Dean Martin's voice when he sings Christmas songs. That's because he's drinking all the time. <laughs> That's right. That <laughs> I mean, was my mom's boyfriend, right? You know, she loved him. So my sister loved John, Jim West and my mom loved Dean Martin. So um <laughs> And then as far as movies, there is a funny one that I, I, but I can't really remember the name of it. But anyway, I mean, I'm not really a movie buff. So, but it is when I used to have a video and watch every, I'll, I'll think of it in a minute, maybe. <laughs> yeah. How about it you always think? seems to be that you have to have a movie on while you're, while you're making Christmas dinner or Christmas, mm -hmm. whatever. It's always, yeah. you know, and I'd, I'd rather it not be. When is the puppy bowl on? Is that Christmas or New Year's? I, I, I don't know. But it, I, I normally don't watch football during at Christmas. It's it's some stupid Christmas movie. Uh -huh. Yay. Yay for the dumb, stupid Christmas movie. Yeah. <laughs> 
Do you have another question, Danny? No, that was it. Just movies and song. Okay. Well, I, you know, I missed the, a lot of the, I don't know if you guys remember, um, and this was more like the late seventies or, or early, I mean, maybe probably since the fifties, but all of the, the Christmas specials they used to have with like, like the Andy Williams Christmas special and Dolly yeah. Parton Christmas special and all. I mean, we used to love those as, I mean, I used to love them because I loved anything music and, and costumes and Christmas. And I mean, it, yeah. That used um, to be really big. But yeah, yeah I, miss, I, I kind of miss those. That. I know yeah. they're kind, kind of coming back, um, but I, but yeah, I, I really like, I know Michael Buble did one and, but I, um, variety shows, I guess you'd say, <laughs> Christmas variety shows. Too. Um, but yeah, I love stuff like that. Um, yeah. um, I was just telling my daughter today, cause she used to play uh, violin in the orchestra in high school. And so every year, you know, they would do an orchestra Christmas show and that was mm -hmm. awesome. I love that. Yeah. 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 So anyway, I'm just wondering about, is there anything else you want to share? And I think maybe we should even close with a blessing, Ooh. just a, a blessing of our hearts. I'll start. And if you guys want to add, how about, yeah. um, okay. I just want to just, um, first of all, just be um, aware of our coming together in a sacred space and be aware of this wonderful opportunity to share in the memories of the past and how we have created um, our own rituals now and our own sacred space in our life now. And just be thankful for our spirit team who, who I know has been here today with us, who support us no matter what we do. And um, I, I feel, I feel Debbie, I know your son, I just feel your son. Oh my gosh. <laughs> wow. Right by the tree. Okay. Um, so thank you. Oh, I mean, really, I feel all of your families here, really. So, um, uh, and I just wish that, you know, our, the peace that we have in our hearts can be shared around the world and that the light in our hearts is known not only to ourselves but to others is anybody I'm else just seeing i'm just seeing everybody <laughs> linking in and stepping into that warmth that light and that light is full of love so wherever you find yourself whether you're surrounded by lots of people, or you, you have your fur family around you, or um, you're, you're going it alone, it, that warmth and that love is there for you. Just step into that uh, uh, this season. Um, whenever you may be feeling, uh, even if it's just in a nostalgic moment, just link in and step into the warmth of that love and light. It is just pure love for you. Mm. beautiful so I just thinking of all of the the things going on in the world right now and and kind of the the divisions that are happening and the there's war going on and there's um the earth is struggling and I just I'm I keep picturing a white light around everybody and just a softening of everybody's heart mm. to be able to just let down just a little bit and love a little bit more that that is my prayer for for the year for next year for for the years to come that there'll be a softening of hearts and just the ability to to love just a little bit more, mm -hmm. including loving the earth itself. Mm -hmm. And I think that when we um, imagine a better world, which a lot of times uh, in, in the past, there at this time they're talking about imagining a better world. Um, and if we do that right now and just live in that world that we create where everything is, is better, is full of love, is full of light, 
um, where we do get along with our neighbors and um, not call them names because they disagree with us um, and vice versa. If we can imagine that and just keep that image alive a little bit longer than normal, then things are going to start shifting on an exponential level. Mm. Thank you. Thank you all so much. Thank you for sharing. It's been wonderful. Thank yeah. you, Kim. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And happy holidays, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> happy, happy holidays. Happy holidays. Yeah. holidays. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm going to sign us off.